putting those questions to them to uh, give them an opportunity also to respond to the questions that are coming from you. Let me go straight into the questions and I'll start with you, Patience, to say that uh, we want to look at uh, uh, your view in uh, terms of the manner in which uh, different media platforms, including social media, even covered the by-elections uh, in the uh, weekend. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to the program, and uh, I think that's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at how the media fared in covering the past, the, the elections, uh, the run-up to the elections and the election itself, it was actually a very interesting time uh, as we have been monitoring the media for the past 20 years or so. And we've realized uh, for this election, even if it was a by-election, there was a lot of uh, hype that uh, uh, came with these elections from the media. But we also realized that uh, unlike past elections, we it actually felt like a national election where we found that there was a lot of reporting that was there of the political parties and the party presidents themselves, as, as well as spokespersons of the political parties. We saw them featuring very prominently. And uh, you would have thought, uh, you wouldn't have realized that this was an election that was actually uh, looking at the National Assembly or, or electing people to the National Assembly and to council, because there was very little coverage uh, of uh, candidates themselves and uh, local government um, candidates uh, as well especially if you compare that to the party leaders who took up a lot of space. What this meant, I think, uh, for citizens and what we saw was that there was very little that we knew about the different candidates as we're getting into the election. Very little around what were the constituencies uh, that would be contested for, uh, what were the issues in the elections themselves beyond uh, the um, campaigns that were being done by the national, the, by the party leaders themselves. So it was actually a very interesting election. Um, but overall, um, with, without that much information on the actual election itself and what was happening on the mm -hmm. day, what were the issues. And we also did see quite a lot of uh, reportage on uh, the Electoral Commission and how the Electoral Commission was running the election, uh, whichever way you looked at uh, was being reported, but there was a lot of uh, uh, reporting that was being done by the media on the nature of uh, election administration in the country. So those pretty much were the overall trends in terms of how the elections uh, were being covered by the media this time around. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me come to you, Ostalos, uh, to say from uh, uh, the lenses of um, a political party or political party as a participants in the election um, how would you um, characterize the the coverage of the media uh, in the uh, past election I think that uh, from our perspective uh, I think that we received fair coverage from the private media in Zimbabwe um, something which I think that would appreciate uh, even if uh, whether it was uh, putting a positive or negative image, but I think that we had a fair share of us uh, getting the right to response, um, you know, and coverage of our political programs, mm -hmm. and also coverage of uh, the issues that we intended uh, to represent. And more importantly, I think that our rallies had a fair coverage uh, from the private media. I think that we didn't get coverage from state media which is very unfortunate because in our view, in our respectful view, which is informed by the constitutional mandate of state media, which receives uh, funding from taxpayers, which were part and parcel of, uh, has got a constitutional mandate to give fair coverage. Uh, it was very unfortunate uh, that we didn't get coverage as an alternative from the state media and uh, also from uh, Zim papers. Uh, which uh, receives state uh, funding and has got a constitutional obligation to cover all political parties, irregardless of how big or small they are. And I think that uh, is a universal complaint by other political parties outside ZANU-PF. Um, it's it's um, um, obvious and was clear that uh, you would find ZANU-PF uh, coverage of life in terms of their rallies, in terms of their political programs uh, predominantly, the entire part of the day. So something that uh, uh, is very unfortunate, we engaged the Electoral Commission because of also its mandate in terms of regulating mm. the uh, 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 you media. know state media in terms of providing coverage 
but to no avail. The only time we had coverage uh, from ZBC was a coverage for one of our members of Parliament, Chaudon Wende, uh, in Kwazana, and uh, the audio was deliberately on mute uh, to the level and extent that it facilitated further perpetuation of propaganda against uh, and embedded partisan you know, coverage of our political program, which is very unfortunate. But uh, as I've said that, we also obvious as an alternative find platforms and methods around which we're able to put our narrative out there, in particular through the use of social media platforms, which uh, majority of Zimbabwean people uh, have got access to, in mm -hmm. a way, to be able to articulate and send our alternative agenda for so, transformation. So your engagement with uh, uh, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, your complaints that you, you put forward, what was the, the resolution, what was the, the reasons why you were not receiving that coverage? I think that uh, the right answer would come from ZEC because we never got a response from ZEC. Um, and uh, it's part and parcel of ZEC's failure in terms of the insincerity test that we had said is part and parcel of our engagement in the by-election to find out to what extent is the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission committed and, and sincere in terms of executing its constitutional mandate. The only response we got from ZEC was uh, on other issues that we raise, and in fact, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has gone ahead to say that uh, they actually didn't get any complaints from us, which is not true because we've got uh, copies of the letter that were received by the commission. And part of the signal mm -hmm. complaints we put was issue of unfair coverage by uh, uh, the state media, which we thought they were supposed to act on. Okay, we are going to to talk uh, about that later, but let me bring in uh, Goodson. Goodson from the lenses of uh, non-governmental organization, you lead a federation of uh, non-governmental organization. And uh, from your lenses, when you look at the way the media covered uh, the past election, the by-election, how would you characterize it? I think what my sister said uh, as a media monitor was more to the point that um, uh, the media is, it is up to the editorial policy of the actual media to determine what is newsworthy. If other political parties don't have anything that is newsworthy or being a repetition of what was being said the previous day and the previous day, mm -hmm. the editor may decide that it's not newsworthy. But, but, uh, but before, uh, before you continue, I will allow you to continue, but I want to say his point is that, uh, for instance, ZANU-PF rallies mm. were being covered by the state, uh, by state media, mm -hmm. yet their uh, rallies were not covered by the state media. Yeah, I was not actually, I, don't, I was not actually focusing on him. Uh -huh. I was going to make a general statement, okay. and I was going to cover that as well. All right. First of all, it is important for the people to understand that in Britain, America, and other countries, newspapers belong to different, support different political agendas. The Mirror supports the Labour in Britain, the Sun supports the Conservative. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Secondly, the idea that a political party needs a, a positive media coverage for them to win an election is not wrong. I support ZANU-PF. I'm a member of ZANU-PF, even though I have a non-state actor organization. I don't need the media to articulate the views that I want or that I'm going to use when I'm voting. There's no role for the media because there are other ways of communicating to people the political agenda. But uh, people want to use the mere fact that state media mm -hmm may support government ministers or support or cover the state president. That's how it is when Biden goes to anywhere he goes in the world, it makes headline news on all media in America because he's the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. In Britain, the same story. Now, this argument that is being brought about that we put in a constitution that state media must, uh, must actually cover all political parties there are more than 50 political parties in Zimbabwe. Mm. So how does an editor in a state media decide? But, um, but the, law, the law does say that uh, uh, every political party must have equal time in terms of coverage. No, it doesn't say that. Mm. It says they must just be fair coverage, full stop. 
It doesn't say there must be equal time. It can't say when it can't tell the editor, the constitution can't tell the editors that don't cover the president mm -hmm. because we are because otherwise you must also go and cover the president of, of MDC Alliance. It doesn't say that. But but people who wanted to who wanted to use the media against Zanu PF, they wanted they created a, 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 a private media that was supporting the opposition. Now they wanted to control the state media so that the media, so that ZANU PF has no media at all. But is it fair then that uh, the state media just covers ZANU PF and doesn't cover other political it's parties? It's not very true. On the radios, I was hearing b b political components from media, MDC Alliance, MDCT, and also I had uh, Charlton Wende, Lynette Kanyeri, and a lot of, lot of other MDC, triple C mm. candidates being interviewed. You must not forget that the triple C themselves also have a very bad public relations with state media. They chase them. They've been beaten up. Mm -hmm. They've chased them. It's a, it has been re widely reported in the media. Okay. And, and whenever they call them to say an interview, they say, no, we don't talk to, the, to, to you. Mm -hmm. we, we talk to other media, not yourself. That's a fact. Okay. The good thing is uh, Ostalos yeah, is here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they, they it is, Ostalos, you, you chase the media. You it has been reported. Uh, uh, the media to cover you. Uh, Why do you do that? that uh, I think that uh, with great respect, uh, I know that he belongs to a political party, but I think that his uh, submissions, in my view, are very limited in terms of the role of media, in particular in a space where, where we are a constitutional democracy. We mm -hmm. gave the mandate to uh, state media to do and give fair coverage to political organization, not uh, to, to those who are holding uh, political power mm -hmm. in this country. It's very unfortunate that uh, for someone who is experienced uh, in media to give such submission in front of uh, the entire world because the state media has got a mandate mm -hmm. by virtue of them collecting money and surviving on the basis of taxpayers' money. We are part and parcel of taxpayers. Taxpaying does not uh, uh, include members of ZANU PF alone. And I don't think that it's very unfortunate that ZANU uses America and the West, uh, when it suits them, and when uh, in terms of an agenda that they believe is good, and when it doesn't, the West are uh, for the opposition, opposition are the puppets and some warped political submissions. Mm -hmm. I'm giving submissions that are not based on assumptions. The assumption, again, that uh, even in Western countries, the media is biased. It's, it's a predominant assumption by people. There is no editorial mandate. In anywhere in the world where you go to South Africa and the SABC is said to be a, a media outlet for ANC or for the Economic Freedom Fighters or the, the Democratic Alliance, the editorial policy talks about fair coverage and I don't think that there is a, a media in the world that is said, yes, people can make their own conclusions that you are pro this or you are pro this, yeah. but there is no media outlet, a legitimate media outlet. And I want to respond on the last uh, question around uh, uh, us not covering. We've yeah, said yeah, it yeah. publicly, and you know that. I've met a uh, stern uh, uh, information d disseminated to state media that, look, we have actually gone further and say we're going to provide, on top of the accreditation that is done to U.S. journalists, mm. we're also going to provide a further accreditation. Without questioning anyone, you come to us and say, I want to be in the rally for the purpose of protection of journalists, not of state media. And I don't recall anywhere where uh, we have uh, abandoned or not talked to state media. We have said to Herald and Zim Papers, look, it becomes difficult for us to give an opinion when every time you, I've told you an example of what is recent, which is factual. Charlton Wendo was interviewed by ZBC. They switched off the audio. They played something and said a totally different story. That is the reality and fact of what happened just a few weeks ago. We have invited just a few days ago, mm. ZBC was in our, in our uh, uh, press uh, brief that we made. After yeah. we have publicly said, Zim Papers, come to our Even if you request security, mm. we are prepared to provide you with security because of that kind of ZANPF driven narrative that journalists are harassed in our political rallies. That's not the fact. That's why we've said as triple C, as a new political organization, because of conscious of some of the challenges that have happened, our mandate as information department in role number one is to protect the media and give them the space, whether they report uh, uh, bad about us 
or good about us. Our job is to provide them with a platform. Mm -hmm. And it's very unfortunate that Zanu, and I'm happy that he has put Zanu's position. And I hope that this is the position by uh, their president, Emerson Nangako. This is the position by their spokespersons in their various capacities. That is a ZBC, as he has said, and Zim papers have got a political agenda to cover ZANU-PF. That is what he has said. No, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted you to come in to clarify that one. Yeah. Yes. First of all, first of all yeah. I, I want us to hold, uh, not, none, none of us must uh, raise the temperature. We are not fighting, we are very cool. We are even yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah. discourse. I did not say I'm speaking on behalf of ZANU-PF. Mm. I said I am a member, a member of zanu -PF. That's all. I don't. Uh, I am not in the decision making of Zanu PF. If you want Zanu PF's position, you go and talk to Chris Mtrangwa. Mm -hmm. He is the one who is their spokesperson. I am only a supporter. Mm -hmm. But it's so a, a, a supporter. A supporter. Yes. It is a fact that there has been instances that have been reported in the media of trouble between uh, state media reporters when they go to MDC rallies. But that's not that. I don't want us to waste our time talking about arguing about that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the role of the, of the media in disseminating information in its truthful way. Yes. Is it a true thing that Zim Papers gets state money, like he says? It's not true. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The lack of uh, information or knowledge, Zim Papers does not get money. If you look at the budget, there's no money that comes from the budget to pay Zim Papers. Do you understand that? I want to correct you again. I want to correct you again. If you look at the budget, yes. no money was given to ZBC. They must generate their own revenue. It's a state broadcast. They are subsidized by the state. They are not what subsidized. The the, uh, if you, uh, I want is to that factual? No, no. What I want to say to you, in the budget, no money has been given to Z, ZBC. It's so allocated. It's allocated to yes. them. Hmm. So don't talk about them as if they get state uh, subsidy from They don't. They get, they get, they get so, so, so how, how do they get that their money? From from adverts. Probably, yeah. They get adverts. They go out, Zim papers, they get the adverts, and that's how they make their money. ZTN, maybe. No, no. Not, not <laughs> ZBC. <laughs> All right, let me, let me. ZBC as well. Uh, they let me. Make money. And more importantly, yeah. we in Zimbabwe can see through what the opposition in this country likes to do. They created newspapers in the private sector to which zanu PF members say are parroting their agenda. Mm -hmm. But we are not going to fight with the private media. We say it's their democratic right to do that. Mm -hmm. And we are going to say, and, and they're saying state media supports zanu PF. Mm -hmm. If I was them, like we have done, mm -hmm. we found ways of communicating in the private media. Okay. They must learn to do the same thing. Okay. If in Britain you don't like what the Labour is doing, and the media writes about it, you go but, switch but to the it, sun. It sounds to me as if you're saying, if, uh, before I go to passion, as if you're saying, um, uh, as an OPF, you control the state media. I, I have not said and, that. And when you do so, yeah. this is where the complaints are coming. And first of all, as an OPF, we don't control the state media. Mm. Okay. And I have not said so here. Yeah. What I am saying is that they are security, it's a security risk for any state media to go to an MDC function. The MD, triple C is... It's, it's, it's a security... That's what they say. The that is, that's uh, what ZBC uh, say. Uh, reporters, that okay. they've been threatened and they would been attacked. That's okay. what they say. All right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And it has been written about. It's not like uh, you are hearing from me. Mm -hmm. They say that uh, we, call, we called them, they don't want to answer back. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. We, uh, as a member of zanu -PF, I want to expose triple C. Okay. I want the state media to ask triple C that you talk that you are a constitutional democracy, mm -hmm. and in a constitutional democracy, you go to an election. When you go to an election, if you don't like what something that has happened with that election, you take go to the electoral court. If you don't like what the electoral court has done, you go to the constitutional court. And once the constitutional court decides, eh, you zip your mouth about that and accept the results. In America, mm -hmm. that's how it was. In South Africa, the way the electoral disputes, that's how it was. So if you are talking about a constitutional democracy, mm -hmm. the last people to talk about a constitutional democracy are the, is triple C. Mm. Because they don't recognize the constitution themselves. So they can't talk about a constitutional democracy to ZANU-PF. Mm. They don't. But, but again, uh, they, they, they say or they complain that these institutions are captured. Let me, let me come to, to patience before we, uh, we, we, we respond to that. 
uh, patients here are the issues and uh, obviously it seems to me that uh, there are practices that uh, the media is expected um, the way the media is expected to conduct itself would you say as monitors yourself the way that the media conducted itself during the uh, by election is uh, what is expected of them uh, maybe I can just start off with uh, some of the principles and the standards mm -hmm. and has been rightly spoken about. The Constitution is our guiding document for any political party, any person, any media in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, Section 61 of the Constitution is very clear yeah. around the role of the state media and what the state media is supposed to be, how, what role it is supposed to play uh, in terms of how it reports. And it is very clear the state media is supposed to be uh, fair, it is supposed to report equitably, it is uh, expected to have editorial independence and I think that is a very clear uh, concept where mm -hmm. uh, editorial independence is really there, it has to be free of influence from anyone, from politics, from business, uh, you know, from any uh, sector of society so that there is that editorial independent and it is a principle of the media that we need to, to be clear about it when we're speaking about uh, what the media is supposed to. The Electoral Act itself is also very clear. In section 160E to H, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is clear around what the media is supposed to do. All yeah. media is expected to report in a certain kind of way. It is supposed to report in a way that is equitable. And the e Electoral Act is clear around this. It's about equitability. Uh, whether that is uh, interpreted to mean equal is something else, mm -hmm. but it has to be equitable. That yeah. means that it has to ensure that there is sufficient diversity in terms of how the media, especially the state media, the public media, is reporting around electoral issues. So I think uh, when we are speaking about the role of the media, these are the, this is the basis for which we, are, we, we should be able to look at the media and how it has been uh, reporting on um, elections. Yeah. In the by-elections that we uh, we just uh, went through, mm -hmm. uh, we monitored, uh, as, as media monitors, I'll speak from our perspective, we did monitor uh, different uh, media outlets um, for the month of March. And uh, while there were differences week on week in terms of what was coming out, we did see those trends where we see uh, that the ZBC does report majority of the time on, on, on ZANU-PF. And when we are speaking about ZANU-PF, we are not speaking, we do recognize that the state media has a mandate to actually report on the president, on ministers, on government business. And this is not part of the, the, the statistics that we carried out. We would only pick out, for example, where the president or where the spokespersons, the ministers are speaking as members of ZANU-PF and they are identified as such. Mm -hmm. And that's when you actually realize there is a high percentage of uh, reportage that is actually for ZBC. And when we're looking at ZBC, yes, it did report on smaller political parties. Um, let's just say all the other political parties, yes. whether it's CCC, MDCA, yes, UZA, is. NPF, there was maybe 1%, 2% of time allocated to these uh, political parties, but you'd find that 70% of the time it was uh, ZANU-PF. And when we look at uh, overall picture in terms of the different, uh, 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 the, the other media outlets that are there, there was that trend where you found that ZANU-PF was covered pretty much by all um, uh, media outlets at not to the same extent. With some uh, media houses, for example, you'd find uh, privately owned newspapers would cover uh, CCC more than they would cover ZANU-PF, but it was almost, uh, there was quite a high percentage of ZANU-PF coverage within the privately owned newspapers. And when you went to uh, radio stations, provincial, uh, national commercial radio stations, mm -hmm. very high percentage of ZANU-PF, but there was coverage of other political parties as a significant percentage of CCC, MDCA. Yeah. And overall, if you look at the overall picture, what it then says, I think what we need to be looking at as the media is what are we saying to the public? Mm -hmm. What we now have is a situation where we have three political parties that are taking up the majority of space. Mm -hmm. Of course, ZANU-PF with the lion's share, and then we've got MDCA and CCC. And so what then are we saying as the media? When we are looking at how we are covering, are we diverse enough? Are we presenting the citizens with enough information for them to be able to make clear decisions mm -hmm. around who to vote for, who's participating? As uh, I indicated very, at, at the very beginning that when we're looking at um, 
when we're looking at the elections, there was that uh, hype about the party leaders. And the party leaders are coming from these three big political parties. Mm -hmm. And those are the three people that we thought, probably thought were contesting and were voting for as citizens, because these are the guys that we see in our media houses overall. So I think as the media, as we're moving forward, the media needs to assess its role. Mm -hmm. Yes, we might support political parties at, at, a, at an individual level or at a, at, at a media house level. But what are we saying about your own audience who actually deserve to have the information they need to make decisions that are informed when they are coming into the polling station. So I think mm. pretty much that is what I would say on so, the matter. So, so you say that there was a gap in terms of uh, information, especially looking at the candidates, those who were contesting in the election. Yes, there was a very definitely a very big gap. Uh, National Assembly candidates were actually fortunate that they were actually covered by most of the media houses. Mm. At local government level, I, I, I believe... Um, for 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 the for for the words that I'm coming from, I do not remember seeing my uh, my, my councillors, my my mm. the contesting councillors that were there, uh, actually uh, having any space at all in the media, for example. Mm. So what exactly are we saying? We and I monitor the media every day. What about citizens who do not have that opportunity to be able to? go through every uh, a platform, you can go through radio, I can yeah. go to TV, the ordinary person out there who has to vote in Ward 41 in, in, in Marlborough, for example, mm -hmm. what, what exactly are we saying to that person? Who is your candidate? What are, they, what are their propositions? What exactly, who, who are the contestants really? So how do you really make a decision if you don't know? Yeah, yeah. Which is a clear role of the media around providing information. And outside the politics, as media, we need to start thinking about our city, uh, the citizens, our audiences, yes. before we start thinking about who do I support, etc. because now we are not playing our role. Mm. Okay, uh, I come to you, Ostelos. Uh, uh, clearly, when uh, we went to patients, you wanted to respond to uh, what Goodson had said. I, I, th I think that he confirms um, uh, 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 very important things mm. in the politics of this country in relation to uh, uh, media and the ZBC, something that I think that uh, is uh, so revealing, which I think the world or uh, Zimbabwean people were not aware of myself included, um, that uh, because on one end he speaks uh, on behalf of Zan and on the other, he doesn't. But what is clear is, yeah, for me, he is, he the, 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 the following issues. He is a supporter, issues. though. Yeah, here are the following issues. Mm. Uh, number one, and I, I need to help him on the question around Zimbabwe being a constitutional democracy. And, and, and for me, Zimbabwe is a de jure constitutional democracy and a de facto one-party state. So when the reason why we make complaints about the conduct of the commission, the conduct of the judiciary, is because we are conscious of our moral and constitutional obligation that we must cite. And we do this because it's got a bearing on the stability of the country. So when we say uh, there is a problem with the commission and there is no redress, when we go to the court and the court clearly gives a political judgment, it's something that speaks to the issue that is raising, whether it's Zimbabwe a constitutional democracy. A constitutional democracy is, is a case not just of the theory or the document that we've mm. got a constitution that is supreme. Are we practicing the constitution? Is the judiciary in this country independent? Is the executive able to respect the legislative arm of government? Definitely not. The legislature in this country cannot hold the executive to account. But, and that is the basis for us of the, the uh, defining whether Zimbabwe is a constitutional democracy or not. Mm -hmm. There is no respect of rule of law in this country. There is rule by law in Zimbabwe. So we can't say when we've got a complaint as a contestant in the political processes, we go to the courts and the courts give a political judgment. And Zan, in his own word, the narrative say that you guys must accept it because you have gone to the court. We are exhausting domestic remedies because we respect the existence of the court. But it doesn't mean that the court is fair in this country. There are a plethora of evidence in this country that proves beyond any scientific doubt that the judiciary is not independent in this country. Something which is why we are talking about the reforms. Mm -hmm. Because they are very important so that the judiciary is able to operate outside executive influence in this country. Mm -hmm. and, and I want yes. to... I want to uh, uh, respond on the question of coverage. I'm happy that my sister has given facts as they are. Mm. That 70% of uh, ZBC's coverage mm -hmm. were about, Z not the state, 
programs. ZANU PF, because the problem which is confirming right again about coverage and ZPC's uh, political objective is conflation of ZANU PF and government. The conflation of ZANU PF and state institutions, mm. which are supposed to be independent. He's confirming clearly here that uh, there shouldn't be no difference between a constitutionally independent institution and ZANU PF, which is the predominant problem that we face across the entire problem. If you look at what was happening in our political rallies, the police who say we are not we are not giving you a go ahead of a, of of you to do a political rally, mm. what you would see in the caucus, and I'll give an example of Marondia, in the caucus of the hierarchy of the police office would be as a non ZANPF person making the decision whether should we allow them to go ahead or not. Which is why we made a political decision as an alternative that ZAN, our political committee, can determine whether we go forward with a rally or not. For it's clear, it's proven beyond any doubt that okay. the conflation of ZANPF and the Zimbabwe Republic Police mm -hmm. is a problem in this country. And it's got a bearing in terms of having free, fair and credible election. The same mm -hmm. as media. That the conflation between a journalist, a reporter of ZBC, and a ZANU PF person, there's no different. Follow them on the internet space. The narrative that directly comes from the political leadership in this country is the same narrative that you get even from government employees. I'll, I'll give an example of Nick Mangwana. You want to differentiate between Nick Mangwana and Chris Mutswango. One is a spokesperson of a political party. The other is a government spokesperson. Mm. We should be speaking on the agenda and okay. intentions of government, okay. which is let, a problem. Let, let me bring in uh, Goodson. Obviously, Goodson wants to, to, to make responses to the issues that you raise. Uh, Goodson. Yes, I just want to say, like I said, I'm going to be very calm. Yeah. One of the biggest problems that we have in this country mm. is what kind of an opposition party have we got? Mm -hmm. What kind? What are we being told by what he has just said? That if next time around, Shamisa wins victory over, in the unlikely event, over ZANU-PF, <laughs> somebody in ZANU-PF must then say, we are, we are politically, we don't, think, we don't think that the election was correct. We go to court, the court says, no, Shamisa won. Mm -hmm. Then we say, no, we don't recognize Shamisa ourselves, like they have mm -hmm. done. And they are calling themselves a constitutional democracy. In my view, there is something wrong with the constitution that we have. Yeah. Constitution itself. Mm. Well, what, what is wrong? What is wrong with the constitution that it was, it was, it was re drafted for regime change. It was drafted for the opposition. It was paid for by the people who started the movement for democratic change. How, how, how is that? Let me just explain. Let's, I'm, I'm going to explain let's, that. Let's deal with this one. Yeah. How, how do you say that when we know all of us yeah. participated in the uh, 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 constitution making process? Mm -hmm. how, how does it become that? Uh, let me tell you. Yeah. I participated in COPAC on behalf of ZANU PF. Yes. The, as far as we are concerned, many people in this country believe that the people who funded the constitution or the uh, 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 making, making process, process yeah. were the Western countries, and they put in clauses there that were specifically put in to achieve the following scenario. They funded the po opposition newspapers, then they put in a clause also mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, the, even the state media itself mm -hmm. was also closed to ZANU PF, uh, thinking that that is how Zimbabweans. They need a media to see through the emptiness of political agendas that people are correcting in this country. Mm -hmm. Somebody in Binga who has never, currently they listen to Radio Zambia, majority of them, mm -hmm. not even here. So they don't need a, a, a radio station to, for them to decide how to go and vote. But if your political party is completely empty, and I'm telling you now, the biggest d d danger to this constitutional democracy that they think they have mm. is the organization called the Triple C. They are the biggest danger to this country. It is a very dangerous organization mm -hmm. because everybody understands in the unlikely event that they were ever to get power, 
we are guaranteed that there will be a civil war in this country. How, how is that? How is that? Uh, I know, I know, Ostalos, you want to come in, and, yeah. and but he has raised an issue that uh, your organization is a danger. I just want him to, to, to explain, explain to how us dangerous it is. How, uh, how are you saying it's going to lead to a, to a civil, civil war, war if they win the election? When Chamisa says at a rally, vote for Triple C within five days, whites will come back and bring in money. That's a very highly offensive statement. You can't he, tell... He, he has said he has investors. Said, investors are white, white investors. Yes. Whites will come back. That's mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. I have him on tape. Yeah. And we'll be playing it for the tape on a daily basis for the people to hear what he says. So. Okay. That's a very dangerous thing to say because I'm telling you now, mm. the majority of people in Zimbabwe will never accept a triple C government without a civil war first having been fought. That's what I think. Uh, is what, is, what is wrong with uh, uh, whites coming to this country? Because they, I know, for instance, you're a supporter of Zanu Pia, mm -hmm. and I know the president has been said we are going on an offensive for re-engagement and engagement. Yeah. When because, the but, same people. Uh, there's a perception that the Triple C is, represents a return to Rhodesia if they ever come to power. Oh. That is one of the reasons why in Arare here, even though there appear to be more triple C supporters, the majority of them who might not like Zanu people decide to stay at home because they understand this issue. Mm -hmm. And don't think they don't, they do. But the agenda of the triple C is a dangerous agenda. Mm -hmm. Like I told you earlier on, if the people removed, and I wanted the, he was not here, I want him yeah. to hear this. Mm. The people who removed Robert Mugabe, mm. They removed him because they said he was about to give this country to people who did not fight in the war of liberation, one. Mm -hmm. Two, that they were agents of imperialism, those people that they wanted to give their country to, and they removed Robert Mugabe. And those people have not gone anywhere, they are around. Okay. They are around. Let's, uh, let's give Ostados uh, an opportunity yeah. to respond. You are a dangerous organization. You are going to lead to a, a, a civil war in this country if you win the elections. <laughs> Look, um, I was not even supposed to laugh because he make very, uh, very dangerous submissions himself. Very unfortunate, um, but they reflect, as I've said, the position of Zanu PF. And yeah. I think that he speaks clearly what is in the mind and heart of the state president, who is a member of Zanu PF. And I think that uh, uh, there will be no problem if we equate in the future discourse in the politics of this country the submissions by him as reflections and beliefs by his own PF. Number one, and I hope you allow me to state facts as they are. He mm. talks about a possible uh, war in this country. The 42 years Zanu has been ruling this country without a popular mandate. The question will be that Zimbabwean citizen must be able to know. Let's not talk about what he assumes is going to happen when a triple C government is to take off. Mm. Let's talk about what has happened when ZANPF has been in government. Thousands of Zimbabweans were killed in Matebele land in a program of supported for by government, a political agenda by ZANU to create a one-party state. What went down to history is Kukurahundi. Thousands of Zimbabwean people were massacred, brutally killed by ZANU PF. This is what happened under the watch of ZANU PF. Number two, Thousands of people who belonged to opposition against ZANU to ZAPU were killed and massacred, jailed and tortured by ZANU PF government. You know of Operation uh, Murambatsina. You know how many people were displaced, killed by ZANU PF government. You know what happened in 2000. Emerson Mnangakwa said this and I quote Mugabe wanted to surrender power to the opposition in 2000, and I personally, as Emerson Mnangakwa, stopped him subverted a constitutional will of the people. What followed after that? Long sleeve, half lived. How many people were killed uh, by ZANPF, monitored and uh, regulated and supported and de deployed by Emerson Mnangagwa? It's on record, he has said it. And we know what happened after that. When he said, I, I saw Mugabe, don't worry, we are going to uh, deal with it. I'm talking about 42 years, what happened in 42 mm -hmm. years. And I want to remind you again of what happened under ZANU-PF government. People were killed in cold blood in 2008 for different political with ZANU-PF. You know what happened even to their own political allies in ZANU-PF. He talks about the military coup that they led. They displayed their own members. 
uh, fired bullets on the houses of their own members in Zanpef because of the agenda of uh, uh, political power. He talks about retention. I want to talk about this as the second fact. He talks about uh, investment imperialism. Mm. What he doesn't know that while he is here in front of cameras talking about an anti-imperial agenda, Zanupev and Amtulinube is pursuing a private sector-led economy. Is that not ideologically informed by the West? Zanupev's uh, open for business agenda is knocking, and I want to quote Amtulinube and Patrick Chinamasa in his days in the Ministry of Finance. He says, if the Bretton Woods institution don't open a door for us, we'll keep on knocking, but they are only saviors. What does the Bretton Woods institution represent? They represent the West. They represent white monopoly capital. The agenda that he's talking about of the liberation struggle, mm. and it's very unfair because he himself belongs to the liberation generation, and he knows this as a matter of fact, that most of veterans in this country suffer because of ZANU-PF. Why? ZANU wants to monopolize the liberation agenda. But two things which were critical on the agenda of the liberation struggle, mm. which ZANU has bastardized, the sanctity of the vote. Number two, the land question. We went to the liberation struggle, and by the way, ZANU doesn't have monopoly over the liberation struggle, because our own parents fought for the liberation struggle. Do you think that if I was there, with my level of political consciousness, if I was there in the liberation struggle, do you think I would have joined the Victoria forces that led this country to independence? Definitely not. But I was not born, and it can't be uh, monopolized to me that I was not part and parcel of the liberation struggle because I was not there. But mm. what I can tell you is that while this is talking about the imperial agenda, while this is talking about the land question, ZANU under Emerson Nangako is giving land back to white people. The reality of the fact which he must be talking about mm. to the people of Zimbabwe is that my Zimbabweans, ZANU Yagu Dosera Minda Kuwarung. What they are doing, and I I, allow me to, to just finish. Uh, this because it's a yeah. very important issue. Mm. Zanu in this uh, present moment in time, they are passing land to white people in 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 Chiret. They are passing the land in 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 Manika land. Wherever, go everywhere. You see, this land is being passed to white uh, white people, whether they are from the west or the, uh, or the east. They are being given land in this country. Black people don't have land. War veterans are continuously being vetted every day under ZANPF government. Why can't we finish the vetting? They use it for political objectives. That's ZANU and Mnangok right now. They are pursuing an ideological persuasion of, in fact, ZANU is the greatest right-wing organization in this country. They have gone to the right. The liberation struggle was informed by the left. Marxist Leninist ideological persuasion. But under Mnangakwa, ZAN is to the extreme right. He knows this for a fact. He knows that the Arab peace in this country has been used to facilitate right-wing neoliberal political economic agenda. In this country, let's that's what we're talking about. That's the economic reality. Let's allow him to, to, to come back to respond to these issues. Yes, that, okay, okay. Uh, all, but uh, uh, before you do that, because I, I, I feel that uh, uh, patience, obviously, uh, the, the, the discussion here is diverted uh, a little bit. We're but focusing not a, not on... a little bit. <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> because we're looking at the media, the role the media has played and, uh, in covering the election, in informing the people. But there's a point that he raised, that people in the periphery uh, of the country, uh, at the borders, uh, they don't have access to, to, to TV or, or radio. They actually listen to um, radio stations from other countries. What does that say as moni media monitors? What does that say when we look at the right of uh, 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 people to have access to information? Problematic, of course. Uh, it's definitely a problematic uh, situation that we have. Mm -hmm. But it also points to some of the structural difficulties we have in terms of our media in Zimbabwe where we uh, see that there are quite a number of problems in terms of how we have actually ensured, tried to ensure that there is diversity and access of the media by mm -hmm. all people in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. um, I will just take broadcasting, for example. We recently saw the licensing of um, community radio stations. Yeah. Within that whole process of licensing community radio stations, this is where, f as a first step, we are actually supposed to start seeing uh, these communities being granted the right to be able to speak for themselves, to have mm -hmm. radio licenses um, given to these communities. Unfortunately, the challenge that we have is uh, around how do we um, 
identify who is applying? Have we actually given capacity to people in different communities to be able to apply for, for, for community radio licenses so that they can be able to speak about their own issues? That is one challenge itself in terms of access. The second is really around what exactly, what uh, provisions have we put uh, for community yeah. radio stations, for example, to be able to broadcast? One of the big issues is around politics where they have, uh, they, there is a provision mm -hmm. in the act that re uh, uh, community radio stations, and this includes um, campus radio stations that have yeah. been given licenses as well, cannot uh, delve into any issues around politics. And that is already problematic. At what point are you going to say, uh, are you going to talk about it's politics or politics talk about uh, elections and start this? Uh, at what point? I, I think it's, it's very just a very problematic proposition mm -hmm. that we have in terms of ensuring that citizens have the access that they need to the information they need, especially around electoral issues. But like you said, uh, yes, uh, there, there is that problem. We mm. don't, the citizens do not have access. ZBC itself, while it has the highest... Um, uh, the, the, the most uh, it's the most accessible uh, has the most accessible signal around mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. still does not cover all the areas that it needs to cover and I think this is also something that we need to consider when we are looking at what the role of ZBC is it have being that station that has the highest coverage it must have at least that moral obligation to ensure that everyone is covered to ensure that everyone has the information that they need and that also requires them to be fair in terms of how they're presenting uh, issues and propositions, in terms of how they are just pushing different agendas to ensure that we are pushing more around uh, development for our own communities in terms of what the people actually need. Mm -hmm. So uh, this means no to parties in politics, for example. On ZBC, we just have to ensure that we are fair in our coverage. We are equitable in terms of how we present issues for everyone. And it's not just a matter of political parties that is a challenge. Mm -hmm. We also have an issue around, uh, for example, coverage of women who are, who are in politics, yeah. for example. And we see that um, very few of the women candidates got a lot of space. Yes, uh, we, we found that uh, where you had space, uh, that women were speaking around political issues, it was a lot around the, the, the uh, leaders of political parties or yes. spokespersons of political parties and not the candidates themselves. And this is across the board from any political party. So women themselves, especially women candidates, definitely have uh, a, 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 um, a need to be seen, to be heard out there, and they should be invested in actually ensuring that there is that equitability we are talking about because it's not just about which political party do you belong to? It means which demographic group do you, do you yeah. belong to? Yeah. If you are below 36, the chances of you getting quoted in the media, if you are not uh, or, Mr. Or, or Sisi, or say, is, <laughs> is very limited, for example. <laughs> if you are yeah. a woman, the chances are, even, are, are, are low as well. So we need to, I think as a society, we just need to be invested to ensure that there is enough diversity for everyone to have a space and to have a say on what they, they want to see on their national broadcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, because I don't want uh, the this debate to take a, a detour. Uh, we want to come back to the media and okay. say the issues that she is raising really are critical issues to say that uh, the, the space is not fair. Yeah, now, uh, you know, this is very important mm. for me to say this. In Bingham, mm. they don't read Zim state media, Zim papers. Mm -hmm. In Bingham, they can just about get ZBC, but they listen to uh, radio in Zambia. Mm. So, for the people who are in that area, the media plays no part in their decision making about anything. But what matters to them uh, is the various agendas of the various political players. I, 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 already they have a right that is being violated. No, 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 no. They have a right, yes. That they is being violated. I, I'm saying they have a right. Mm. But, but you know what? Eh? The people who are trying to hype this thing, the role of the media, and like I'm trying to tell you, they are, it is for regime change. That's the reason why it is impossible for them so that when they write their lies about fake abductions, mm -hmm. it must be written in the paper to say that Mamombe was, was, was abducted, which was not abducted. So they need that in the media, but that is the basis on which, the first basis on which they seek to come to power. So when anybody is sitting in any newsroom, he looks at the, MD, at the MDC leading to opposition, and say, what is the general agenda there? I'm a Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. I would not say, I've not been told by anybody to support. The agenda of the opposition that we have in this country, that's why I said, 
it, it is a very dangerous opposition because of the capacity for them to move the British Lords House of Parliament in Britain to make things about them. They don't talk about anything, in, in anything that happens in Africa. It's only about here. They are agents of imperialism masquerading as politicians. That is why they are dangerous. That's why they are going to lead our country to a deadly civil war. So, and, and so you say the people in those areas must not have I didn't access say that. To, to media. I didn't say that. Uh. What I am saying is that the media is not the most, the be it and all of the rights of fundamental. The rights of fundamental of Zimbabwe is, is as fundamental as someone in America and Britain saying, we will impose sanctions on you until you vote for the MDC. That is the intimidation of the highest order, and the people in Zimbabwe will not have it. Mm. They will not allow a party that, is, that we are being forced by Britain and America to vote for to take the levers of state power. Because we are being intimidated, that, that we are being told that if you don't vote for MDC, and the MDC is saying so, that if you vote for us, the Americans and British will bring money here, there will be no more sanctions anymore, they are forcing us to buy into a Rhodesian agenda set up by the Rhodesians who set up the movement for democratic change long before he grew up as a young man. He was not there. Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to say to you, and what I'm saying to you is very, very important. You must ask yourself, those people who removed Robert Mugabe, are they still around? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I want to help. Uh, Again, like I said, yes, you're going to respond to that. But I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to make sure that our, our discussion yeah. focuses on the media and yeah. the role that the media plays in terms of uh, informing people on uh, uh, who yeah. to, 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 I'll, to elect, I'll yes. We are the only African country, and mm. um, I'm happy that uh, uh, um, the, my old man wants us to stay in the lines of facts. Yeah. Number one, uh, we are the only African country with one uh, uh, television station. They pride themselves to be liberation struggle. They are liberation uh, fighters across the African continent. Uh, but but, but uh, we, let's, let's correct this, we, uh, Ostalos. Yes. If you say we are the only country with one uh, TV station, we have had uh, other stations being licensed just uh, recently, and uh, we have other stations that... Ah, uh, you know, I'm talking about the main broadcaster. Mm. We, we, we have one, ZBC. You can't access it. You talked about how these other TV stations are there across the country. They are not there. We're talking about boosters. Mm. Is, is it a state media? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. We can't be proud as a liberation country, which was liberated against imperialism. We can't be proud of saying people in Binga don't have uh, access to state media. We can't be proud of that. And it's an indictment. It's an indictment on the failure of ZANU-PF, which masquerades as the, the, liberate, the people who liberate this country are all liberators, not the ZANPF. It's the liberate, which our parents were part and parcel of, the liberation forces. That's one. Number two, I want to, uh, to help my, uh, my old man here. It's very unfortunate because they deployed him to be writing uh, propaganda on behalf of ZAN. Do you know where these people are right now? They've got uh, money, their money staged in Swiss accounts in the Western countries. While well, they are giving him a, a salary in and, with, and when you say these people, you mean... Uh, the ZANPF elites, okay. which is defending. The elite in ZANPF are actually in Europe. Do you know what they are doing? Uh -huh. They were exposed during the, uh, 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 one of these international summits, buying champagne. He was here writing Zim papers. It's very unfortunate, but they are abusing the old man. They are, they are actually, they've got houses in Principe, in France. They've got houses in Washington, D.C. They've got houses in the Western this is countries. The people. This people. Uh, uh, like and uh, allow me to, I want to, to help people. Uh, the old man here, uh, which is, while he's, he's defending uh, 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 Zanu PF, they actually, let me tell you, one of the people who is at the center of corruption in this country mm. is from the West, Z. He's got, he's, 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 the guy has bought uh, national uh, 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 companies like uh, National Foods. He's yeah. bought a, a, a Simbisa, a, a Bekazin. He's at the center of seven heights of corruption let in me, this country. Let but me say, from the because we are, we are coming but, uh, to the uh, end of he, the program, he's, 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 he's yeah. here defending them, which is uh, uh, oh, very yeah. unfortunate. And uh, I want to remind him as a yeah, last point. Yeah, Allow me to respond right. to him as a last <laughs> point. Give me a last point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to respond to him to help him. Yeah. And I want to remind him. It is the labor movement in this country yes. and the students union mm. which called the old veterans and said, look, 
the willing buyer, willing seller program, mm. which you signed for in the Lucky South resolution, is not sufficient to address the land that question in this country. These war veterans, after we gave them political consciousness and reminded them of what was at the agenda of the liberation struggle, took to the streets and marched against Mugabe. One of their inscriptions in the placards, and I know he's a historian, was, we throned you, we can dethrone you. Who informed the veterans? It was at the University of Zimbabwe. Was mm -hmm. there Zanbev? No. Mugabe then came in. Let's say, let's come to the end of uh, this program, Mustalos. To, to, uh, to, to, to push the wedding buy wing seller program, and it with the mm -hmm. fast track land reform. So, let's because this, his political consciousness has escaped him. I want us he to deal with forgetting. The, Recent historic events that happened two decades ago. That right. It is us who came with the agenda. And as I conclude, so, so you have been Sam complaining. President, you have been complaining. Sam and the president Young has actually went back to the Lancaster resolution to say, no, let us compensate white farmers. Let us go back to the Lancaster resolution. They've confirmed it that we want to go back to the Lancaster resolution of paying back white uh, people. Let's, which say, we let's deal with uh, the last question, uh, question. Ostalos, uh, and uh, I'll start with you uh, as we are wrapping up. That uh, clearly we have seen that uh, media plays an important role in informing people, and uh, especially the marginalized. What, with the complaints that you've been making as uh, a political party, what is it that you think needs to be done to ensure that people uh, have access to? I to think that we need we need reform. Mm. Uh, we need proper reform in this country. Media reforms are very important, so that the media is able to cover every political organization. I don't speak just on behalf of the Triple C movement. I think that. Media must be able to cover ZANU PF, MDC, Mavambogusile Don, Linda Masari, Kisnos Mukwaji, and everyone else. So that people in Zimbabwe, the media plays a critical role, which he tries to undermine in terms of putting ideas into the political market. Because the danger of not having political contestation is that route that he's talking, the route of instability, the route of stress of terror. Let us mm -hmm. defeat each other at the level of ideas. On superior logic, let the part with superior ideas, because our difference with Zan as our competitor is about trans how best can we transform the lives of ordinary people in this country. Nothing else. Let me which come, I think that the media let me come to you, to uh, good son. Obviously, yeah, the, 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 the media in hmm. this country is doing fine. Okay. The people who are not happy with the media in this country are people who are the agents of imperialism. Okay. And the agents of imperialism in this country are represented by the MDC. That is why they took such a heavy beating in this last election. They lost seats to ZANU PF. They didn't take, take one seat from ZANU PF. And let me tell you something for next year. And it's good for you to be, that you are going to hear this from me. Mm. Next year, you are going to get a serious hiding because mm. there are 35,000 villages here. We are not going to allow a situation that has been there that people in the rural areas walk 15 kilometers to a polling station to go and vote. We want the distance to a polling station be, to be the same somebody who lives in high fields and who lives in a rural area. Every rural area person must have election. There must be a vote at a, a polling station in every village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so the media no. is doing fine. Uh, I will yeah. not allow you to go there. Uh, it's a discussion for another day. Patience, uh, yes, how, how, what is it that we need to do? I think there are several things that we need to do as yeah. a country. First of all, we need to abide by the Constitution. The Constitution, I think, is a document that uh, guides us as a country in terms of how the media is supposed to be uh, operating. Mm -hmm. And this Constitution was uh, something that we all voted yes to. And I think we need to respect that as mm -hmm. a country. We need to also ensure that we are following the law. Uh, the letter and the spirit of the law. What is the spirit that was the, the law was made to ensure that everyone has access to information, there is equitability, there is diversity, and ultimately we have democratic processes thriving in this country. Yeah. So following the election, uh, the, 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 the laws, is including the Electoral Act. And lastly, I think that uh, uh, with the Electoral Commission, it has that mandate. And it's one of its roles is really to ensure that coverage by the media is... Uh, non-biased, it is fair, it is equitable, it is accurate. And I, I think it is important for ZEC to ensure that it